Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another unboxing video. So, I actually went about 15 minutes recording it, and then uh, one of my perfume fairy godfathers slash mothers wrote me, and I went to switch to look at it, and it stopped recording. And I'm not technologically smart enough to know how to splice two videos together. So the first 15 minutes of the video was actually talking about one of the gentlemen who sent me um, some fragrances, some very expensive fragrances from Henri Jacques. Uh, and he wants to remain anonymous. So what I did in the first 15 minutes, I'll save you guys the time, is I just basically uh, went through each one of these and I, and I read off some of the notes. But I figured, you know what? Um, I might just be able to cut that out and say thank you very much to my perfume godfather who, um, you know, wants to remain anonymous. You know who you are. Thank you for sending me these. There's stuff like this, uh, Nabucco Parfum Fin, which is a discontinued brand. They're no longer available, um, is what he basically told me. The brand is kaput, uh, but they made some great stuff. And he sent me a bunch of Henri Jacques fragrances like Blue Vanille. And I just went through each one and said, you know, probably what I'll do. And you can see, I think these are pure parfums. So you only really need a drop. They're like a Tars. Uh, is I'll probably wear my scent of the day, which by the way, my scent of the day today is Basara by Shiseido. Absolutely fantastic discontinued masculine from back in the day. If, um, if you can find this for a relatively decent price, I would highly recommend it. Um, has a beautiful lavender with spices dry. It's very dry. Uh, the advertisements from back in the day showed a fire behind it. And I can completely understand. Look at the bottle. You know, it has that fiery red feel. But almost like because the wood was so dry, it got set on fire. You know, that kind of feel. There's no frankincense, I, I don't think, or anything like that. Um, and so probably what I'll do when I'm testing these Henri Jacques, since they're literally, you just need kind of a drop and it'll bloom with these Atars, is I'll do some videos at night. So I'll have my scent of the day like I am today, and then I'll test the Henri Jacques fragrances, and there's a bunch of them. You know, he sent me probably, I, I didn't count them, but I would guess more than 10. Um, you know, stuff like uh, Et Portant. The names on these Henri Jacques are brutal for an American. Um, Sudan Lover, Sudan Lover, um, stuff like that. So basically, long story short, is I will go through these and test them. These are very expensive fragrances, very expensive, as I drop one, uh, very expensive juice. Um, and, um, you know, there's no way I could test these otherwise. I just, I wouldn't spend a thousand dollars on 10 mils of a pure parfum that you just dab. It's not my thing. So thank you to my perfume fairy godfather for sending me that one. I know you want to remain anonymous, so, uh, you shall remain so, but, uh, you will start seeing some Henri Jacques videos pop up at the end of the day at night, you know, when I can kind of wear it and test it after, you know, my scent of the day, which I, I prefer to spray my scent of the days. So I probably won't make those my scent of the day, but I'll test them at night. And I'm not the kind of person that thinks you need to wear something for a month to give it your true, you know, thoughts. It's I think if you have a good nose and you understand perfume, you could even wear it once and do an early impression and that will add some value. But there's not very much talk on those fragrances, probably because it's uber expensive uh, and it, just the price limits people from, you know, it's not easy to go out there and just, um, you know, it's not easy to go out there and spend a thousand dollars on 10 mils or 20 mils of a pure parfum. Not many people have that ability. So, um, uh, Basara is absolutely stunning, by the way. I'll do a video on this one day. It's only the second time I've worn it, so I'm not ready to do a full review or talk about it in depth, but I can tell you, it reminds me of, you know, if you've taken a fragrance like YSL Jazz with that lavender. Imagine if you just plucked the lavender out of jazz, you know, maybe the lavender and coriander, that old school masculine combo, and you mixed it with the tobacco that we saw a decade later in uh, Michael by Michael Kors. And because there's a tobacco note in here, um, and it's absolutely stunning. It's uh, It's got this leather dry down too. But the leather is so refined. It's not the kind of leathers that I talk about how much I love, you know, the Bellamy's, the Pure Distance M. It's not that. It's completely different. 
uh, but it's it's its own thing and it's absolutely beautiful. So the second part of the unboxing is going to be two boxes, um, and these are from Rachel. Rachel is okay uh, revealing her identity. So Rachel, thank you very much. Honestly, you went above and beyond. I sent her some samples of some vintages that I um, I'm gonna try to open this without um, without cutting my finger off or revealing her address. And so I sent her some vintages, long story short, and she did the same, but of course she went above and beyond. Um, so let's open some of this up, shall we? This is going to take a while, so maybe it's good that I cut out the Henri Jacques part of the video. You guys don't want to watch an hour of me just opening stuff and reading notes, I assume. So this little bugger right here is called uh, Winter Nights uh, by uh, Dyson Fragrance. This is an eau de parfum. Look at this. Look at this. Um, it's, it's Honestly, it's too much, Rachel. You are way too kind. And I told her she's too kind, and she said, no, not too kind. I just know you're the only one who will do justice to this. And my heart went, Ugh. But seriously, thank you. Um, I am, uh, you know... I'm used to people being nice to me, but the the that's why I was wearing my glasses and the thumbnail because I honestly you guys make me feel like a rock star when I um when when I get these little sample sets from you guys, these little freebies that you want me to talk about. I feel like a rock star and I'm completely okay with accepting stuff from people like that who I know and trust and um you know, there's no, it's not from a brand that expects something. I'm even okay taking something from a brand now, as long as they understand the fact that my opinions are going to be my own, and that's that. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say something nice about it just because you said so. Uh, but this is a Josh Meyer creation who did um, the Imaginary Authors fragrances, I believe. And this is supposed to be this forest, campfire, cardamom, tea, lavender, and musk fragrance. And I can smell the smoke. I can smell the smoke from here. This sound, this sounds like it's going to be right up my alley. I love fragrances with smoke. So, um, Dason, Fra I've never even heard of this brand. I've never smelled anything from them. I know Josh Meyer from Imaginary Authors, but that's pretty much it. All right, let's keep digging. Let's keep digging. Um, we've got Clandestine Laboratories Film Noir. I know Clandestine Laboratories from... Um, from the, um, streams on Instagram that the Scented Devil does. So, Film Noir, he hops into those streams some, sometimes. And, um, this is French Lavender Neroli, uh, Nepalese Pepper, which I'm not familiar with how Nepalese Pepper smells versus regular pepper. Rose, Pimento, Iris, Honey, Honey. Vanilla Absolute, Patchouli, False Sandalwood. What is False Sandalwood? Does anyone know? Uh, leave it in the comments. I'm sure I could look it up, but Vetiver Oud, Choya Loban, Choya Loban, Tonka Bean Civet in Oak Moss. This sounds amazing. Uh, Choya Loban is a perfume oil which contains the Indian frankincense Boswellia Serata, so it's a type of frankincense, perfume oil. Wow, this, uh, I know Clandestine Laboratories is a brand that is independent. He kind of goes his own way, he does whatever he wants, and I really appreciate that. So I've never smelled his work. Thank you, Rachel, seriously. Um, I, uh, I am humbled by all of this stuff, and, and this is only part of the first box. There's much more to come. Um... All right, so next, oh, Jesus, seriously, like, um, you know, it's, you guys can't see this, but I'm going to open this box here, so as I don't, uh, so as I don't um, show her address on the stream, okay. So I mentioned that I was really interested in smelling some of the Sense of Wood fragrances. And I just asked her for a decant. And she said, I've got multiple bottles. 
of um, plum and cognac, I'll send you a bottle. I said, no, you don't have to do that. She's like, no, absolutely sending you a bottle. Um, so here you go. Plum and cognac. Uh, again, thank you, Rachel. Seriously, I mean, these are not cheap fragrances, so you are way too kind. Eau de Parfum, 75 mils. Uh, and I can't wait to wear this once the weather cools down. This is a brand I'm really interested in. Um, how do you open this? What's the trick? Is there a special handshake? Do you have to knock three times? What is the trick to opening the... Ah, there we... Ah, it's, it, it is a trick. Okay, and here we go. Plum and Cognac. Look at that. Look at that bottle. I love the bottle, actually. And she picked the black on black, which is what I would have picked. Oh, I love these kind of fragrances. So, um, this bottle is actually pretty interesting. The, the brand is called Sense of Wood. I, I believe it's called Sense of Wood. And their whole shtick, and you can see it's almost like the, um, the, the bottle almost looks like a heart, right? Um, I think it's supposed to be a... Um, almost like a tree branch going off, but it looks like a heart to me, which I actually like that design idea better as a, as a heart. Um, it's a little bit more personal than a tree, but I think it's supposed to be a tree with, you know, a tree, heart of a tree with branches coming off and stuff like that. The cap is heavy. Um, they put some quality in it, although it feels like, you know, rubber on the outside, it is heavy. The bottle design I like, it's unique. Um, and just the smell from the atomizer smells amazing. So I cannot wait to jump into this. Plum and Cognac. Plum and Cognac. Whoops, did I uh, spell it wrong? Plum and Cognac. Plum in Cognac, sorry. Um, came out in 2020, Plum Rum Absolute, Cinnamon Peru Balsam Osmanthus Immortel Absolute, Haitian Vetiver Vanilla and Cistus. This sounds right up my alley for a winter fragrance. So again, thank you, Rachel, seriously. And, um, I have another one of their fragrances that I'm going to talk about when it cools down too. It's called Oud and Bourbon. So they do this like, um... You know, these different takes on trees. Um, I think I heard a story where the brand owner said that he tells the perfumers, in this case it was Pascal Garin. Pascal Garin. Um, they tell the perfumers to kind of imagine when you were a child playing with a tree. What kind of tree was it that you used to climb when you were a kid? Um, and, uh, you know, some people, of course, would say oak, and, and some people would say maple, whatever it is. Um, and they would say, use that imagination to create this fragrance. But rum absolute and plum and vetiver and vanilla, it's, it sounds like a beautiful winter fragrance. I cannot wait, cannot wait to, uh, to dive into that. So thank you, Rachel. Seriously, way too kind. Um, and then we've got box number two. All right, let's see if I can open this without, uh, flashing her address here. Where's my handy dandy unboxing knife? Eh. Eh. I sent her some um, some things like Derby and Pavarotti and some things that she wanted to smell. Aramis, some of the masculine she's never got to smell. And uh, she was telling me that uh, her husband wants to buy full bottles of, like, all of them. So, um, so, I mean, that's, that's a, um, that is a, a great way to get introduced to the, to the vintage masculines. She was saying he used to wear, you know, whatever it was, uh, she said, I forgot Blue de Chanel or something. Sauvage and now he's wearing Abbey Rouge and Heritage and stuff like that because of the samples that I sent her and so if um, He can get Derby and Aramis and I sent him Cartier Roadster and I sent him 
um, you know, all these masculine fragrances that she has never smelled, he's never smelled. Some of them hard to get, uh, Pavarotti and stuff like that. And so, um, we did this little swap. So I hope she can find some full bottles. I really do. Now she was very kind. I wanted something like one mil, you know, I just wanted like one mil of this because I know this is also a very expensive fragrance. Um, it's called Jacques Fat. And if you know what's coming, you know, it's Lyris, L Iris de Fat. And this is one of the most expensive Iris fragrances money can buy. I think a 30 mil bottle of this is like $1,500. It's literally like the gold standard when it comes to Iris. Uh, the vintage stuff is supposedly um, out of this world. And um, let's see. So they recreated it uh, based on a um, based on an older formula, and so the vintage stuff is, you know, uh, I think it was called Iris Gris from 1947. Vincent uh, Robert created the original Jacques Fat Iris Gris. So they they recreated it. It's called La, I had like a competition or something, and it became La Iris de Fat. And she sent me the sample because she said she bought a full bottle. I just wanted like a tiny little taste, you know, so I could say I, I had a chance to to wear it and and under and understand it. Um, but she sent me the the whole sample that she had left, and because she bought a full bottle, um, I'm gonna have to smell this real quick. Wow. It's like Oris Absolute Iris City. Um, and Oak Moss Absolute in the base. Beautiful Turkish Rose. Um, jasmine from Grass. All the most expensive materials. And um, yes, yes, it's... Uh, uh, I think the perfumers who ended up winning the brief uh, to, to recreate Iris Gris into the Iris de Fat was uh, Patrice uh, Riviard and Johan Servi. And um, apparently they did a bang up job. They're only making, I think, 150 bottles of this every year. That's it. That's like, that's all the level of Iris and Oris and, um, you know, Oris Absolute and Oris Butter. That's all they can manage because it's such an expensive ingredient. And $1,500 a bottle, there's probably not many people. Again, same thing as I was talking about the Henri Jacques. There's probably not many people willing to just go drop $1,500 for 30 mils of Iris to fat. But um, anyways, Rachel, it's a true honor and a pleasure to get to review this one day or at least intelligently talk about it now. So it might help people's opinion if they want to go spend this kind of money. I mean, it's a lot of money. $1,500 for 30 ml is a lot of money, which works out to a lot of money per mil. So three, four mils, whatever's here is is a lot. So thank you. I, 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 I really, really, really feel like I'm not worthy to, uh, to receive these, this level of gifting from, from both of you. Perfume Godfather number one, and Perfume Godmother number two. Thank you guys. Honestly, it's amazing. Can't wait to talk about this stuff on my channel. And there's more. So, uh, we've got some samples, which you know me in samples. Um, you know me and samples. Um, so, we've got a Francesca Bianchi, which is the one that I wanted to try for so long under my skin. I've never tried under my skin. You know, I love those kind of sexual, uh, overtly sexual, uh, seductive, dirty fragrances like we talked about Salome on the video with uh, the great Liz Moores, the very kind, by the way, with her time, Liz Moores. Um, and I sent her some samples too of some of the vintage masculine. She's, she has not smelled or hasn't smelled since the 80s or whatever it was when she was a teenager. So um, I can't wait to hear her feedback on what she thinks of like vintage Coros and Antaeus and 
Daniel Hector character and all the stuff I sent her. Um, but this is one, Under My Skin, is one that I... Um, that's one that I really... Um, you know, I've been I've been looking forward to smell. I'm not a huge fan of Francesca Bianchi, her her line and her aesthetic. Um, but this is one that I'm very interested in because it has this animalic spiciness to it. Supposedly there's castorium and real ambergris, and she uses this orris butter in a way that smells amazing. So this, I will make my scent of the day one day and do a video on it. That's Francesca Bianchi's Under My Skin. All right, and then, let me try to put this back in here. Very interesting little packaging that she has too. Um, okay, so then we've got, ah, this is uh, Violet, yes. So Violet Paris has a fragrance called Compliment. Now. This brand is very interesting to me because um, there is actually, you're probably going to have to search. You're going to have to look. It's not just going to come up right away. But um, Sebastian on the Perfume Guy channel did an interview with the gentleman who founded this house. They, I think they pronounce it Violet or Violet. Um, and this house was a house that apparently was founded in the 1800s, uh, used to compete with Guerlain. I mean, they were, they were even publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange. And then after World War II, they just disappeared, you know, and their fragrances went with them. And they had some hits. I mean, they had some serious big time hits. So these guys, these kids who went through perfume class or whatever, I don't know if they're trained perfumers or not, but they thought, how cool would it be to re resurrect this house because they found all the information for the house. They did the research. They, you know, resurrected the house, but they didn't just use the name and then create their own fragrances. They actually found the formulas of the old Violet fragrances and rebuilt them in the same formula, if you will. Now, there probably are modern tweaks, but they used Nathalie Lorson, who's one of my favorite perfumers. Um, and so there's a couple from the line that I've been wanting to smell. Compliment was one of them, Violet, um, and the other one that they made, uh, was a fragrance, I think it's called Apogee, and Apogee, um, let's see if I can find it, Un Air de Apogee is what it's called, 2017, it's supposedly this honey, tobacco, leather, cystus, anise um, fragrance. And again, Nathalie Lorson is the perfumer. Um, so that is on my wish list, that Un Air de Apogee. But Compliment is another one, by the way. And the breakdown on this, this came out last year. Uh, floral, powdery, eucalyptus, peony, freesia, orange blossom, Palma Rosa, Violet Leaf, Tuberose, Jasmine Sambach, Jasmine Grandiflorum, which I've smelled both on the smelling strip thanks to um, uh, thanks to Russian Adam from uh, Arige Ladore. And the Jasmine Sambach and Jasmine Grandiflorum are two very different smells when you smell them on their own. Ylang Ylang, Hawthorn, Iris, Heliotrope, Vanilla, Benzoin, Linseed, and Hay. Um, so it's supposedly very floral and powdery, but... Um, and, and what's interesting, by the way, this is their logo. Look, the B. Just like Guerlain used to use the B, they used to use the B. Or Guerlain does use the B. But, uh, Violet also used to use the B, which made, which was very interesting. Um, okay, now we've got 31 Rue Cambo, which, uh, I think Emil once told me that you have to smell 31 Rue Cambo, Ramsey. And it's been on my list for a long time. And uh, I think this is the Eau de Parfum, uh, which came out in 2016. And Jax Polge was the uh, perfumer, even though this one came out in 2016. The original is credited to Jax Polge. Bergamot, uh, green notes, black pepper, iris, rosy, lang, patchouli, and cystus. And um, very excited to try that. A couple of people have that listed as their favorite fragrance of all time, which is pretty shocking. Uh, and then we've got Dante Bra. Dante Bra by um, 
uh, Frederick Mall. And look, Maurice Roussel, Rachel, your favorite perfumer. Um, so Dante Bra is another one I very much look forward to. Um, I very much look forward to doing an early impression on that. Uh, two mils is more than enough for me to give my thoughts where it is a scent of the day. Clove, jasmine, violet, cashmoran, patchouli, sandalwood, frankincense, heliotrope, and white musk. So very excited about that. And then, um, Zerjoff Osel. Zerjoff Osel. I'm not familiar with this at all. And you know I'm not the biggest fan of Zerjoff fragrances. However, I have to be 100% honest and transparent. If you go watch my, my Zerjoff, um, I don't know what you could call it, but I, I created a, a playlist, a watch list, different watch list for you guys to go watch. And Zerjoff is one of the ones I created. And this, okay, this is called Gao by, Zer, by Zerjoff. Gao, I had to rip the top off because it wouldn't spray. And I wore it to bed last night. And even though it is harsh, and it smells like there's real oud in here. I don't know if there actually is or not, but it smells like there could be real oud, although the extraction method may have been very harsh. Maybe like Russian Adam said, they pushed it to try to get as much oil out in three, five days instead of letting the oil come over weeks or months. Um, it smells kind of burnt rubbery, but it does smell like there's real oud in there. And even though it's harsh and uncompromising, unforgiving. I did enjoy it. I wore it to bed last night. I'll wear it to bed again. I won't wear it as my scent of the day because I can't spray it. So I might just have to dab some on at night and then talk about it. Kind of like I plan on doing with the Henri Jacques. Um, but this Osel came out in 2009. I think Gao came out in 2012. They're both from the Shooting Star collection. This is supposedly like a floral sweet fragrance. Um, with citruses and Indian jasmine sambac, Bulgarian rose, patchouli, tobacco, and cedar wood. So much content, thanks to you guys. Honestly, I've got so much content to do. Uh, and then we have Synthetic Jungle, which is another one that I am excited to get to try. Very green. Um, the queen of green fragrances, Synthetic Jungle. And so that'll give me a chance to um, to talk about Synthetic Jungle that came out last year. I think they have another one coming out uh, this year called Uncut Gem. Uncut Gem. But Synthetic Jungle is this green, basil, lily of the valley, jasmine, galbanum, patchouli thing. Uh, and Flippo is the perfumer. Um, so very excited to get to try that. And then someone was just asking me yesterday, did you ever get to try this fragrance yet? And I said, no, but this is Rogue's Fougère Laube. So this is Rogue's Fougère Laube, um, which I own a bottle of um, this. Rogue's Bon Monsieur, which is probably my favorite, um, one of my favorite Fougères. They just, he did such a fantastic job with this. It's uh, classical, but it's its never, you know, you, you won't get bored wearing it, even though it's classically a fougere. And so fougere laube, um, I understand, is a little different in the construction of it. So I'm excited to, um, to get to try this out and do a video for you guys. Fougere... Yeah, Fougere Lab, 2019, uh, Lavender, Absolute, Hay, Bergamot, Petit Grand, Galbanum, Geranium, Moroccan Rose, Absolute, Amber, Camphor. Yeah, there is a little bit of that Camphor, even in Bon Monsieur. Indian Sandalwood, Oak Moss, Absolute, Musk, and Costas. Costas has some animalic pieces to it. That's interesting. Uh, and then there is a Veti Fleur from, Ro from Rogue, which... I think is the one, the Veti Fleur from Rose, I think it, or from Rogue, I think is the one that Emil was telling me she really liked because um, Veti Fleur, because she said it really shows his progression as a perfumer from when he first started to do stuff like Sheep for Siam and Bon Monsieur 
to Vetti Flor, she said that his um, transition as a perfumer has been impressive to see. So I'm excited to get to try that. It's bergamot, java, vetiver, rose, rose absolute, jasmine, iris, oak moss, and cedar. So um, Vetti Flor. And then the uh, bags keep coming. Again, Rachel was very kind. Uh, there is a Meleg perfume called Meleg Fougère, which actually did an early impression of a Meleg fragrance called North Paci Northern Pacific Shoreline. Um, and so if you uh, get a chance, check that video out if you're interested in Meleg. But this also has that winter green note that was in Northern Pacific Shoreline. It's a spicy fougere with frankincense, um, musk ketone, star anise CO2, which is the extraction, um, the type of extraction, kumarin tonka, uh, geranium absolute, mint, peppermint. So excited to try this stuff. You know, Meleg's um, first impression uh, I wouldn't have ran out and bought a bottle. They only made like 30 bottles of North Northern Pacific Shoreline anyways, but it was enough that I wanted to continue exploring the brand, if you will. Okay, next we have another Meleg, and this one's called Temple of, of Oris. Temple of Oris. And uh, Temple of Oris, as you know, Oris is the Egyptian god uh, Temple of Oris is a smoky, sweet fragrance with honey, frankincense, wine, myrrh, juniper, cardamom, henna. That's interesting. My, um, you know, in the Arabic culture, sometimes they'll do like henna tattoos where it doesn't last but a couple days and then it washes off or maybe even a week. Uh, lemon, bergamot, and benzoin. Very interesting. Uh, that, that, that sounds very interesting to me. Um, and then we've got Pacific Marine. So this is the one from Meleg that, uh, she actually bought a full bottle of. So she obviously liked it enough to buy a full bottle. And Pacific Marine, uh, is the bottle with like the coral reef in the background. If you've ever seen it, it's got like this coral reef thing going on. Um, New Zealand White Ambergris, that's expensive stuff, Canadian Fir Balsam Absolute, Mitti Attar, which we talked about uh, when I did my Meleg first impression. Mitti Attar apparently smells like, um, you know, when it, when it rains, when, when a monsoon rain hits dry, dry earth, like in India, you imagine the monsoons. That's that Mitti Attar smell. And Icelandic Seaweed Absolute, so... Interesting stuff. Um, and then the final Meleg is uh, Very Cherry Rose. Very Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli. Very Cherry Rose Chocolate Patchouli. By the way, if you guys have experience with any of these, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Obviously, I'll be doing early impression videos on them, but um, I would lo love to hear your thoughts. Very cherry rose chocolate patchouli is black cherry lychee. I do like the note of lychee. Rose dark chocolate patchouli milk vanilla and orris butter. Interesting. Um, fruity spicy is what it looks like. Um, ah, these are more melegs. Uh, birch tar. What is this one? This is uh, birch tar Russian leather. Birch tar Russian leather, which, um, birch tar and Russian leather, sorry, birch tar and Russian leather. Uh, and it's a 2020 release with birch and birch tar, peru balsam, vanilla absolute, castorium, tobacco absolute, and benzoin. Um, uh, sounds like my kind of fragrance. The only thing is I know that, um... Birch tar, if it's not distilled properly, can be harsh. It can actually be a carcinogenic um, note. So I'm curious to see. I'll have to ask. I'll have to send them an Instagram message and, and ask if it's safe for skin or if it's a fabric perfume. Um, the next one is called Golden Guy. 
I mean, look how much content I'm going to have from all this stuff. And this is just these, you know, these two perfume fairy godparents. Um, I still have stuff that I haven't reviewed from the first couple go-arounds that, that you guys sent to me. So um, I've got a ton of content to do. You guys are uh, very, very kind. Golden Guy is... Um, Golden guy, there's actually a quote here. We sat behind the fish tank in a dark corner of the bar, drinking Tokyo teas. So golden guy is not on here. I don't think it's on his uh, little site. Or is it? Yeah, I don't think it's listed as a fragrance on here. I wonder if it's still in production. Let me check one more place. Nope, I don't see it. Uh, it's, um, unless it's called something different, I'm misreading it. American Oakwood CO2 British Beef Eater Gin. British Beef Eater Gin, that is very specific. French Apricot. Czech Wormwood. Canadian Blackberry. French Chambard liqueur and Virginian tobacco. That sounds interesting. I mean, I got to give it to them. Um, and then we've got a fragrance called Mushin. And Mushin is... I think it's also not on here. Maybe we're getting to some old ones. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, here it is. Mushin. Mushin... Uh, it says Mushin Japanese incense on here, but it says Mushin Kyoto incense on the bottle, on the sample. I'm guessing it's the same thing. Violet Woods, Kiara Wood, Indian Sandalwood, Nagamatha Oil, Osmanthus Absolute, Coconut, Oris Rose, and Jasmine Absolute. Very interesting. Um, and then we've got Canadian Gentleman. I think he lives in Canada, so that's interesting. This will be his take on Canadian Gentleman, uh, which is... Canadian Gentleman, here we go. Woody Floral, Cedar Iris Oris, Alpha I Ionone, Canadian Cedar, Violet Vanilla, and White Musk. So this is his, uh, there's also an Omani uh, frankincense note listed on the packaging that's not listed on Parfumo. I do love Omani frankincense. Absolutely love it. And then finally, we've got Vienna 1900 chocolate patchouli. And Vienna 1900 chocolate patchouli is what is it is it on here too uh vienna 1900 chocolate patchouli i don't see it on here either uh but it says it is oops canadian pine american peppermint mexican chocolate mexican chocolate really canadian blackberry jam peruvian pink pepper indonesian patchouli Okay, awesome. Cannot wait. Um, I feel like a kid in a candy store getting to try all these. And there's more. Don't worry. There's more. How could it be a Ramsey video without it being an hour? And this is with me cutting out the Henri Jacques uh, stuff before. So, uh, not that I'm not thankful for that, but that would have been an extra 15, 20 minutes of me reading Henri Jacques notes because I've never smelled them. Um... Oh, yeah. So we've got Sharer. I think this is Sharer 2, um, which is a fragrance. Yeah, this is a fragrance that um, Russian Adam really liked, and he said I should try it. S-C-H-E-R-R-E-R. -R -E -R, Sharer. I don't know which one it is, though. Is it Sharer 2? I'll have to ask Rachel. Is it Sharer? Ah, there's Sharer and Sharer too. Okay, so Jean-Louis Sharer came out in 1979, and it's a, a green chiffre for women. 
So it's got um, black currant bud, galbanum, iris, Florentine iris, jasmine absolute, Bulgarian rose, patchouli, bourbon vetiver, mysore sandal, mysore sandalwood, really, and oak moss. Sharer 2 is the one that Russian Adam liked, I believe. And Sharer 2 is... Um, 1986, came out for women, uh, spicy and floral, Portuguese, Mandarin, Rose, Jasmine, Angelica, Tuberose, Violet Leaf, Cinnamon, Bourbon, uh, Vetiver, Mysore, Sandalwood, Mysore, Sandalwood, Myrrh, Cedar, Civet, Castorium, yeah, this sounds like I'm going to love it, Apopanax, Benzoin, Musk, Oak Moss, and Patchouli, yeah, Sharer 2 is, I got a feeling that's going to be right up my alley, um, YSL Y Vintage. I have never smelled this before, and I know that's a tra tragedy and a travesty to say, but um, I have literally never smelled YSL Y the Vintage, uh, and so I cannot wait to get my nose on that. Let's see. YSL Y Vintage. We'll say Y Parfum or EDT. I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up Y EDT. Green Chifra with Aldehydes, Gardenia, Honeysuckle. I do love a good honeysuckle note. Not very many perfumes have a good honeysuckle. Jean Amique is listed as the perfumer who in the ghost perfumer book is actually listed as Pierre Bourdon's boss uh, at, at whatever that firm was that they worked at. I can't remember, but uh, he kind of became the boss. Uh, Hyacinth, Oris, Jasmine, Rose, Tuberosi, Lang, wow, Peach, Plum, Amber, Benzoin, Oak Moss, Patchouli, Sandalwood, Styrax, Vetiver, and Civet. That sounds amazing. Um, cannot wait to try that. And then another one I can't wait to try is um, there's an Etro fragrance and it's called Pal uh, Royal Pavilion. Royal Pavilion is this Etro. And, um, you know, I love Goma. Goma is one of my favorite scents, one of my favorite leather scents of all time. And it's so underrated. I actually bought a couple leather fragrances uh in succession. So I bought Creed's um, Royal English Leather, which they say is from the 1700s. <laughs> um, but it's actually not, of course. We all know that was probably created in the 60s or 70s. And um, and I bought Etro's Goma very close together. Etro's Goma annihilates, an absolutely annihilates Creed's Royal English leather. I mean, I liked Royal English leather, but I love Etro Goma in the Eau de Cologne. Um, this is Royal Pavilion. This came out in 89, same year as Goma, but apparently this is discontinued. And it's got Jasmine, Rose, Elaine, Petit Grand, Gardenia, Tuberose, Mimosa, Absolute, Clove, Oak Moss, Sandalwood, Vetiver, Benzoin, Siam, and Musk. Um, Oh, God. And then another, just everything I've wanted to smell. Seriously, thank you. I know I said thank you a million times, but I'm going to default to repetition. Thank you. Uh, Iris Silver Mist. I I love Iris Silver. I love Iris. And so I can't say I love Iris Silver Mist yet because I haven't smelled it. But I love Iris. And uh, so Iris Silver Mist is one I've wanted to try for a long, long time. It's a Serge Luton's from 94, one of, considered to be one of the best irises in the game. Um, powdery floral with frankincense, benzoin, clove, orris, musk, vetiver, cedar, white ambergris, uh, sandalwood. Beautiful. Um, oh, and then another, I mean, I mean, this is like Christmas to me because this is um, Guerlain's Après Londe which I have never smelled, sadly. Uh, I think this is the modern Eau de Toilette. 
but uh, this is very important because I have a decant from Frederick Mall that I've been waiting to talk about because I didn't want to talk about it first. It would feel wrong to talk about it first, but it's called Lodi Vea. And Lodi Vea is apparently Jean-Claude Elena's homage, love letter to Apre Londe. And I have never smelled Apre Londe. So how can I talk about Lodi Vea when I haven't smelled the thing it's supposed to be giving an homage to? So Apre Londe, um, very stoked. Very stoked to get to smell that finally. And then Carnal Flower. Uh, Frederick Mall's Carnal Flower. How could I, um, you know, as far as tuberose fragrances go, that's supposedly one of the best. 2005, uh, Dominique Ropion, Master Perfumer. Carnal Flower is uh, supposedly the reference. Uh, tuberose with jasmine and orange blossom. Uh, and some white musk and eucalyptus and bergamot. Uh, and by the way, I have tuberose absolute that I smelled thanks to Russian Adam. And it definitely has that uh, green, that very almost offending, you know, it almost offends you. It's so green. Um, it almost offends you. It's so green. And uh, eucalyptus, I totally see without even smelling it. I totally see why. Uh, they would use eucalyptus because I'm sure it adds that little touch here. Let's see if we can keep this under an hour. Um, papyrus in Acadia. Now, this is another uh, sense of wood, kind of like plumbing cognac, which, you know, Rachel, you very well just could have sent me one of these for plumbing cognac. You didn't have to send me a full bottle. Thank you very much, though. It's very kind of you. But I'm very interested in this brand. There's very few niche brands that kind of capture my imagination. And Papyrus, uh, this niche brand in general, but um, some of the ones that I'm interested in smelling, uh, I asked for decants of, and of course she sent them. Papyrus in Acadia. Um, Papyrus in... Acadia, Sense of Wood, 2021, Jean-Marc Chailin, which I think is the son of Raymond Chailin, the great Raymond Chailin, Star Anise Carrot, there's a carrot note in here, I haven't heard of a carrot note since, um, Leonard Poron, this is the only one I can think of, well, Leonard as a house put carrot, carrot notes in its perfume, but, um, Carrot Egyptian Geranium Absolute. This smells amazing from the atomizer, by the way. Oris Concrete, yeah. Yeah, it smells like it has high-class Oris Concrete. Indian Tuberose Absolute. Egyptian Cassie Absolute. Egyptian Cassie Absolute? I don't think I've ever seen a Cassie Absolute. Cypriol Tonka Bean Absolute and Java Vetiver. Man, this might be from the atomizer. That smells like it's a bottle contender. Uh, Ebony and Oak is another one from the brand. So they've got all these, you can tell, they've got these different um, perfumes. And they come out with a lot of fragrances because they, um, if you subscribe to their, uh, what do you call it? They've got like a, not a newsletter, but like a, they've got this, um, this monthly subscription where they'll send you, I think like a 10 ml decant or something every month of whatever their new fragrances are. Cool little setup. But Ebony and Oak is a Vise Cesar who did uh, some of the t early Tom Fords. He did Tom Ford's, Tom Ford for Men, I think, from 2007. And uh, this is Pink Pepper, Sri Lankan Cardamom, Saffron, Madagascan Geranium Ebony, Suederol, which I think is one of those captive molecules that's supposed to smell like suede. It looks like suede. I mean, look. Uh, cacao Absolute, Tonka Bean Absolute, and Virginia Cedar. And then we've got Hinoki in Hinoki, which uh, is supposedly one of the freshest in this line of fragrances they've been releasing. Hinoki and Hinoki came out this year. Chakai Namura is the perfumer. 
and it's Peruvian pepper tree with white thyme, cypress, clove leaf, frankincense, frankincense absolute, moss, and cashmeran. And then we've got Oud in Cal Calvados. Look at the color of that. It looks like iris. Oh, these are, I am very interested in this brand. I need to, I need to, I need to wear one of these to really break it in and see if it's as impressive as they, as they sound and smell. Um, Oud in Calvados, 2022, apple brandy, pink pepper CO2, Italian bergamot, cacao absolute, oak, Wood CO2, May Rose, Atlas Cedar, Virginia Cedar, and Oud. Natasha Coty is the perfumer. Interesting. And then we've got uh, patchouli and rye. I love a good patchouli. It's very hard to do unique patchoulis though. So if this is unique and interesting, mm, this could be trouble for my pocketbook. Celine Barrel is the perfumer. Mandarin orange, nutmeg, pink pepper, CO2, Turkish rose, absolute, Madagascan, geranium, labdanum, tobacco, patchouli, and vanilla CO2. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Um, so let's keep it under an hour. Let's do this one finally. The last open, the last little bit here. We've got... Oh, wow. Okay. So, this is a special one. Uh, this is Coty's Emerald, which I've never smelled, from a 1920s bottle. Look at that. 1920s bottle. Um, uh, 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 uh. That is... Um, what a gift. I had no idea she was going to do that. I was expecting the... Um, I was expecting the modern, just the, the, just the mod, just a new one, but it's, uh, supposedly one of the, uh, greatest Orientals of all time. Cote's, uh, Emerald came out four years before Shalimar. It's, um, bergamot, orange, lemon, lemongrass, uh, rosewood, rose, jasmine, elang, uh, vanilla, ambrine, apopanax, benzoin, sandalwood, and patchouli. Wow. What a gift. Thank you, Rachel. Seriously. Uh, I cannot wait to try this and wear it and talk about it. And, um, but I, I don't want to wear it as my scent of the day. I don't want to use that. I mean, I'm, that's irreplaceable, literally irreplaceable. Um, So Coty also had a fragrance called Complice, and Complice, um, how would you describe Complice? It is supposedly a Complice uh, Parfum. Aldehydes, bergamot, orange blossom, peach, lilac, iris, jasmine, lily of the valley, narcissus, rose, benzoin, oak moss, musk, sandalwood, uh, vetiver, and civet. This is a very rare fragrance. Uh, I think it came out in 73, but I don't think they made very much of the fragrance. And I think it is um, long discontinued, of course. Uh, but, uh, what a, I mean, this is another one where, you know, it is irreplaceable just to even get to smell it is a gift. And then finally, we've got, uh, Le Mans by Francois Cody, since this is from a 1936 bottle. I mean, every spray is, uh, basically a gift of stuff like this. So it's 54 minutes in. Um, thank you to my perfume fairy god father and mother, um, the one who wants to remain anonymous. Thank you for the Henri Jacques. I will talk about them very soon. And to Rachel, honestly, I mean, um, you, you went way above and beyond. Um, but I can't wait to get to talk about all these. I mean, 
even just to put up a video at night, even if I just get to spray this once or twice and just give you my thoughts, no YouTuber is doing stuff like this. I mean, it's, it's, it's a blessing and an honor and I feel, I feel like, um, you know, I feel like, I feel like you're, that we're making a difference doing something different, you know, doing something special, doing something where if real perfume lovers want to dive into something like this, maybe they can do it through, um, through, through the video that we're going to put up. I say we, because I couldn't put it up without you. Uh, and without er anyone who's ever sent me something, thank you, seriously. I mean, there's stuff that people sent me. Like I mentioned that Lodi Ver, someone sent me this a long time ago. Haven't been able to get to it yet, but I've been waiting for Apre Londe. So I'll do early impressions of Apre Londe, then I'll do early impressions of Lodi Ver. Um, but if you've sent me something and I haven't got to it, I will at some point. Um, there is a queue, and it's in the queue. Uh, and so hopefully we'll get to it soon. So thank you everybody and cheers and uh, Hopefully we'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye guys